Hi there, it's Rob again. Welcome to the third in our series of Vectorworks Spotlight Tutorials. Uh, just quick guides um, as to how to get started to draw some theatre plans and stage lighting plans in Vectorworks. The first two tutorials we looked at setting up documents and um, drawing accurately and using dimensions and stuff to draw a rectangle um, the right size. Today we're going to look at some of, draw some of the other drawing tools. Um, CAD um, basically a series of lines and shapes and stuff that create a nice drawing. So we'll look at a couple of other tools and see how they interact with uh, each other. I'm just going to fire up my Vectorworks now. I've got to stop the nice blank document. So last time we looked at uh, the rectangle tool. So if you remember we picked a corner, tab to the first x dimension, 2 meters, tab to the second one, 1 meter, double enter, and then we are x selects the, selects the uh, shape. And so that created a one, two one piece of staging. Um, there's a lot of other tools over here in the basic tool set which draw 2D, uh, 2D things. Uh, the line tool is quite, is, we would use quite a lot, and that obviously um, draws lines that are straight lines in specific ways, um, from point to point. So you click and click and move and click again and finish the line. So you could use that obviously to draw quite a lot of your uh, document. Um, there's some other primitive uh, shapes. Uh, we did look at the circle last time. Um, there's other ones, oval and things like that. The key with all of these is that each one, not only if you remember, has a different way of drawing it, so the circle has a number of ways of drawing a circle, the first one being from the centre, um, and the other ones being slightly more complicated ways, so that you can draw your circle in exactly the right place. Um, but some of the other tools as well, for instance, uh, the double line here, has, has this, has a little tools uh, icon here with a spanner and a pencil. Any, any of these tools here, under the, any of the drawing tools that have that, underneath there's a, a set of references, and for the double line preferences, the, the preference that uh, we care about most is the separation of the two lines. So I've got mine set at 50 millimeters here, and I've got it to uh, create polygons, which means, means that it will basically create a very long, thin rectangle when I draw my double line. So having set it to 50 millimeters using the uh, tool setting menu there, I'm going to click, I'm going to drag out, and I'm going to tab and put six meters, and double enter, and that's given me a six meters, you know, a six meter lighting bar. That's quite a handy way of drawing a lighting bar into D, 50 mil separation obviously for the pipe, and uh, and yeah. So that's the double line, but the key thing to remember is that a lot of the, a lot of the tools, a lot of the drawing tools have this little box here. Let me look up to a regular polygon. Also has preferences inside, and, and what that is is a regular polygon is the number of sides. So if I draw right five into my number of sides, it will draw me a pentagon. So, you know, if you have a scenic element, there's a specific regular polygon, you can have that. If your scenic elements are a lot more complicated than a rectangle to, you know, a flat or a double line or a you know, a regular polygon or triangle, um, you can always use the 2D polygon tool, which basically gives you the option to draw around a number of lines and finally join it up at the end, and that would give you a complex shape. Complex shape, straight sides, um, there's lots of scenic elements that might need that. Um, don't forget, when we get on to doing light stuff, you won't be actually necessarily having to draw complex lighting uh, equipment, because that will be provided by VectorX libraries. But if you're drawing, drawing your theatre, or you're draw, drawing scenic elements within your theatre, obviously you'll need to know how to use those different drawing tools. Next thing I want to talk about, really, is the idea of being able to align objects next to each other, and to, to lay things out exactly how you want them. Now, if, I, if our rectangle here is a piece of staging, I might want to have another piece of staging that butts right up to it, or even starts at one corner. And the tool that we use in CAD to do that is called a snap. A snap's like a kind of magnetic point, which means that two points on two shapes uh, can snap together and they'll be absolutely aligned completely. There won't be a millimeter between them in the going. So the snapping uh, attribute uh, palette is down here, and I remember we looked at it last time. If you haven't got it, go to Window, Palettes, and Snapping, and it'll appear down here. Now, all of these snaps have different uses. We kind of won't go through them all now, but the most useful ones are the first few, except for the very first one, which is Snap to Grid. Now, Snap to Grid snaps to a sort of a virtual grid on the drawing. Sometimes in your vector works you might actually be able to see that. It might be a set of blue lines in your drawing. Um, being able to snap to that is not, I find, terribly useful. And it can actually make things a bit more complicated when you're trying to draw things. So I tend to advise that you turn that off to start with. Um, but keep some of the other ones on. Keep snap to intersection, which is this one here with a little cross on it. And snap to object on as being one of the most important. Uh, the one here is snap to angle. Again, is it gives you a possibility to snap things to specific angles, uh, constrained angles. So, so what I want to show you is exactly how that works. Now, if I were to create another one of these rectangles, Another piece of staging, I could do it in a number of ways, I could copy and paste it, I could do whatever. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to select it, so that it's got an orange line around it, using the 2D selection tool. Don't forget, 2D selection is, is an X. So now I've duplicated that, so I've now got two pieces of staging. 
Now, if I want those, that staging to kind of be exactly lined up to the other piece, what I want to be able to do is to pick it up and move it to exactly the right point. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to align this corner here with that one there, so that it's one side on top of the other. So what I need to do is I need to hover over the corner I want to align until a cross appears. When that cross appears, that means I'm going to be able to pick it up and move it. If, I, if, the, uh, if there's a dull arrow appears, a diagonal arrow appears, that means next time I click and drag, it means I'm going to resize the box, and I don't want that to happen. In fact, if you don't want that to happen at all, you can go up on your 2D selection mode, you can go up and turn off this thing here with a little red sort of stop sign on it. You can turn it off, and it means that basically you cannot resize it. So if you're struggling to work out how, work out how to get that, the difference between that little uh, cross there and that diagonal arrow there, just go up and turn turn the resize off because it's a can be a bit of a pain. So, so I'm going to pick it up using this this little point here. We've snapped to that point there. I'm going to click and drag to pick it up, and I'm going to wait for it to ping. Look, it's just pinged straight onto that other point there. And I let go, and it's completely snapped into position. I could do exactly the same thing. I pick it up from here again, and I could snap it to that point there. So you can see how that works, and also the other thing about snaps as well is, for instance, you can use snap in your drawing. So if you wanted to create a line between two points, I'll select my line tool up here. You wait, you get over here, and you go to the bottom corner. You can see your snaps are in. It's actually gripped onto the bottom of that rectangle, and I can draw it out now, and I snap it to the other point there. Click, let go, and you can see the line is absolutely connected. They're exactly the same point in space. So your snaps are very useful. Um, they're useful for a number of things, but certainly for, for, for moving stuff around. Now, obviously, if you want to move stuff and snap it, you need to pick it up in the, at the point where you need to snap it to. So if you want to pick this rectangle up and center it or something, I'll tell you what, let's draw a circle. So I'm just going to draw a circle out. Let's just call it one meter. So it's a one meter circle. If I wanted to put something in the middle of that, maybe I could put, I don't know, uh, um, say, 50, uh, 500 mil uh, square. Now, if I wanted to put that right in the centre of the circle, I could pick it up in the centre of the square, and I could just place it on top. So you can see you can pick it, pick things up. I'll say again with circle. I can place it on exactly on top of that uh, that rectangle there. Now, if you're thinking, actually, I'd rather have um, that. This, uh, this circle is not uh, transparent at the moment, it has got a fill to it, it's got a white fill to it. And so you can show that by, if you go over to the, the fill attribute there, I could uh, turn that off and make it transparent. But basically, uh, if you wanted it to be behind the rectangle there, one of the uh, most important panels in Vectorworks at the moment is, is Modify. Everything seems to be under the Modify panel. So if you go up to the Modify menu and go Send, you can go... You can send it different ways, either step forward or step backwards, but you can go centre back, and that would send that circle behind the rectangle. So that's just a quick thing if you want to reorder the layers of uh, the, within the layer, or the, the object within the layer, so they make more sense. So you can, as I say, you can turn off your uh, fill, you can change your fill colour. So uh, if you went to this little paint bucket tool, having selected the object, you could change it to a, a different colour. Oh god, horrible green there. I didn't really want that. Or you can say so you can turn it off. So now we're looking at two transparent objects. You know, depending on how you wanted your drawing to be arranged. Um, when we get further into these tutorials, we'll look at a slightly more ordered way of doing that. But if you want to just change the colour of something, or if you want to be able to see through something, you can do it just by selecting the object and then going to the fill or line uh, attributes uh, but to sort that out. So, so basically, that's a good way. Using snaps, uh, a good way of moving things around and aligning them within the document. You also saw me use duplicate, which was another way of creating two pieces of staging. So I could, uh, you could then, I say, you could cut and paste, or you could duplicate, and we we did that. Um, and you can see there, you know, that's brought brought me two into play. Um, another couple of tools that are quite handy for use are um, things that change the corners of, of the drawings or lines, things you've done, polygons and stuff like that. So if you needed to uh, cut the corner off something, you can go to a, a tool called Chamfer, which is Chamfer is a tool, you know, imagine like a chamfered piece of planed wood or whatever. And when you've selected that, there's a number of options here, and if you want to just uh, chamfer the core off a bit um, and not have anything left, you can just select the third one, so chamfer and trim. Again, you can see there's preferences there, and you open the preferences, and it gives you the chamfer size. So mine's going to be, I'm going to call it 100mm that way, and 100mm that way, and then I'm going to go OK. So now you can see, when I go to the corner here, one of the lines of this, this rectangle, uh, it goes red. So I'm going to click on it when it's red, and I'm going to extend a line across to the other one, 
and the other line on the rectangle and it's also going to go red and then I'm going to click. And when I finish doing all that you can see that it's actually cut 100 mil that way and 100 mil that way off the corner of my box. So now I've got a kind of piece of staging with a with a hole cut with a corner cut of it, um, and using those tools, um, obviously you can create uh, much more complex pieces of scenic elements and, and anything else you might need. A similar in a similar way uh, to chamfer is the fillet tool. Now fillet same only it kind of creates a rounded uh, appearance. You can see up here um, in the kind of toolbar contextual toolbar, uh, it gives you a rounded look, and, and the third button there will give you a nice round and trim. Again, the tool settings there, it's fillet radius 50 mil. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to do that. So I'm going to click there and there, and it's created a rounded uh, corner to that part of the rectangle. So now you can see how using the lines and using the uh, different polygons and, uh, and uh, other tools, you can see how easily it would be to create anything you might need for your set um, and theatre. Obviously, when we get into more lighting stuff, then we'll be using uh, more symbols in the same way as you would if you were drawing a, a plan with a stencil. But before you can do all that, you'll, you'll want to know how to uh, create uh, stuff within your theatre. And uh, using some of the tools in this session, uh, hopefully you'll be able to do that a bit better. The next thing I want to do before we go any further is to talk about document organisation. So there's two ways of organising a document in CAD uh, in Vectorworks. And this basically down here in the navigation palette, remember at the start I told you that was very important. Um, there's basically two. The first button here is called Classes, and the second button in this navigation palette is called Layers. Now we can go. We'll go on to work with layers and classes in a bit. But basically, the whole concept uh, behind layers and classes is they're kind of quite similar, but you can use them in different ways. Um, some people use layers for different elements of their uh, their theatre plan. So they might use a layer for lighting, and they might use a layer for seating, and they might use a layer for drapes, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to say to you that I suggest that you use layers for physical layers in a in a 3D space. So if you were to use a layer for the floor of your venue, so stage floor or um, or maybe an auditorium floor, you might use another layer for stage, um, you might use another layer for a raised part of the stage, and then you might use another layer again for the lighting rig or the grid or anything like that. So what I'm getting at is the idea that layers are kind of physical layers within the world. There's a reason for that, and we'll, you, you'll find out that later as you go into uh, work with Vectorworks a bit more. The thing about layers is that if you use them in that way, they can be very powerful later on when you start getting more complicated with your drawings. Classes, on the other hand, are more what I would use to create uh, different layers, again, um, different ways of displaying specific things. So if you were to use a class that was, for instance, a venue class, or a scenery class, or maybe a Act 2 class, um, uh, maybe lighting and rigging or something, so you can set different parameters uh, on different uh, classes, but the good thing about both layers and classes is that you can turn them on and off. So if you've created something on a layer, you can make it disappear, or you can lock it, or you can you know, print, print a lot of layers or a load of classes and not print other ones. So that's something we're going to work on in a bit, but I just wanted to introduce that to you before the end of this session because um, it's important to understand the idea of layers and classes, and uh, we'll look at that in a bit more detail uh, next time. So I hope this has given you a bit of an idea on how to uh, use some of the drawing tools in uh, Vectorworks Spotlight, and I'll see you very soon.